As prosperity increased, so did the Wanderlust. And in 1970, Condor celebrated its 500,000th passenger. The market, uh, is the market grew enormously and we needed bigger aircraft. The Boeing 747 was suggested, which was a huge move. The introduction of the Boeing 747 was a highlight in the life of Condor. You have to imagine, Lufthansa only got its 747 one year before any competitor. There were no charter airlines in the world with a 747. A smaller aircraft like the DC-10 or TriStar were much cheaper, but we had to have this aircraft. Together with Lufthansa, we looked at which options were left on their option list. Lufthansa had advanced bookings. One aircraft was pre-booked for 1971, and then we committed and said, we will do this. We concluded contracts with operators, had all our preparations running on this date until it became clear that it was a typo. The secretary had written down the wrong year. We then negotiated with the representatives of Boeing in a restaurant close to the airport until 4 a.m. when Seattle opened. In principle, Boeing agreed with us, if there were no big alterations planned concerning the aircraft. We were able to get the aircraft, and since then, we have just ordered our aircraft in annual periods. And, as was typical for the director Wendlich, he later brought the secretary a bouquet of flowers for her typo. During the ferry flight from Seattle to Hamburg, I initially wanted to organize a bicycle race. Only journalists were invited, and we wanted to organize a bicycle race in the empty aircraft. But the bikes were stolen, and so we had a table tennis game with all the journalists on board instead. Between Condor and the journalists. Of course, we won. And this was the first table tennis game at an altitude of 10,000 meters. It was a Guinness World Record. Nobody ever played at that altitude. As the first charter airline in the world, Condor used two Jumbo 747s since 1971, which were named Fritz and Max. Lufthansa had ihre Maschinen nach den Lufthansa named their aircraft after the nine federal states at that time. With our kind of naming, we had unlimited options. Max and Fritz were just the results of a whimsical thought. Initially, Moritz was supposed to join, but the third aircraft was only leased and therefore would not be around forever. But everybody in Germany said, Max and Fritz. This was a real sensation. Because of their length, some factory halls even had to be extended. On the maiden flight of our Boeing 747 to Mallorca, a lot is going on. And on this day, when the aircraft was standing at the Frankfurt airport, it was unbelievable. The introduction of the jumbos was phenomenal. Everybody wanted to fly with this huge plane, and we were supposed to fly to airports who had never seen aircraft this big. Mallorca, for example, or Ibiza, or Las Palmas, and Colombo. In Ceylon, today it's called Sri Lanka, there were elephants on the apron. They said hello to their big brother, and these were great experiences for passengers and crew. When the Jumbo was introduced in 1972 with 492 passengers, the dispatch was difficult. The biggest challenge was that the equipment on the airports was missing. It was very difficult at small airports, for example in Mallorca, where suddenly two jumbos with a total of 1,000 passengers landed. One has simply put a hole in the fence and the passengers walk through the hole directly to the buses, which are waiting to bring them to their individual destinations. There were also no seat reservations. It was always funny when the people walked from the check-in hall to the aircraft. In the beginning, they all walked slowly behind the ground hostess, and on the subsequent 50 to 100 meters, the passengers then started running. The first one on board usually got a bottle of sparkling wine or a banana. The company called Triumph presented on the 1st of May 1971 its new swimmer collection while flying.
At times, the upper deck of the Jumbo was transformed into a hair salon, and the hairstyle Local Turbulence is created. For the two giant jumbos, it was soon to be a goodbye. In 1979, it was decided with a heavy heart to sell the two Boeing 747s, Fritz and Max. The jumbo, I must just say, he had actually. The jumbo, I have to say, was not taken out of service because it failed, but because of its size. That's how we got the idea of selling two 747s and buying three DC-10s. For the staff, mostly for the pilots, this was a shock. These beautiful 747 aircraft to trade with DC-10s, but the decision was definitely the right one and paid off.